Slavery was a big business in America in the early 1830s. About two million of the country's 13 million residents were enslaved, and the enslaved population, who were considered the property of their owners, was worth hundreds of millions of dollars in modern-day money. So ending enslavement was a wildly unpopular idea in the South and in other parts of the country. Plus, enslaved people did the hard work of planting and harvesting sugarcane, tobacco, cotton, and other crops. They were one of the driving forces of the American economy. Now, more than 150 years after the 1865 ratification of the 13th Amendment, which formally ended slavery in the United States, it might be difficult to understand why there was so much support for enslaving fellow humans and using brutality, including whipping and torturing people to keep them enslaved. At the time, though, many white Americans, both those who owned people and those who didn't, considered slavery a necessary evil. How else could a new country survive and grow its economy? Congress banned the importation of human cargo into the United States in 1808, but the population of enslaved people in America continued to grow due to natural increase, enslaved women having an average of between 9 and 10 children in their lifetimes. Children fathered by plantation owners and born to enslaved women became enslaved. These were among the factors that caused the U.S. slave population to increase between 25% and 33% every year. Though many people in the United States, including slaveholders, were aware of the brutality of the institution, for slaveholders, the economic benefits far outweighed the moral conundrum that it presented. 